Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa! So, welcome to a slightly new setup. You've seen this once before uh, in Wednesday's video because I wanted to like do some quick filming, so I did like a quick setup, and then I looked at this and I was like, I actually kind of like this better. It's easier for me to set up and like you see more of my bookshelves and I just I think that this is just easier all around so I think this is gonna be kind of the setup for any videos I film from now on so welcome to a slightly different angle of the same place so today is my what am I reading right now video and it's a little bit of a weird one for me to do because I've already done two videos that address what I've been reading this month so far just because of like what they were so that was so I'll, I'll link those so the first one is uh my book tubeathon challenge wrap up uh I talked about how many I think I ended up reading 13 or 14 books in that uh and so I thought I would hit the highlights from that real quick which were I would say three books First is The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas. I am gonna film a yay or nay review on this. I mean, it's a yay. Almost all my yay or nay reviews are yays, <laughs> pretty much unconditionally. But I, I do wanna get a video, uh, a review of this up in the next few weeks, um, just because I really, really did enjoy this a lot. I gave this a 4.5, which is a, a favorite of the year. Um, so look for my thoughts on that at some point. But yeah, long story short, I really like this. It is pretty brutal, so I think that caveat needs to be given. But um, I think I've read some, uh, some kind of like starred reviews in various publications, and all of them say the same thing. I do, which is I'm not totally sure why this is YA. I guess it could be. It is sort of about finding your place in the world, but uh, I wouldn't say, well, and I, uh, I don't know. I struggle if, if I would recommend a, a teenager or a young adult reading this. I, I guess I would, but anyway, um, I'll, I'll get into that in, t in the review that I do at some point. So that was a hit for me from Booktubeathon. Another of kind of my top three from that 13 or 14 books that I read was Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. And yeah, I think I was surprised at how much I enjoyed this. But uh, again, you can look in that video and see a few more of my more specific thoughts. But this was really, really enjoyable and my favorite classic I've read so far this year. Uh, at some point, I don't know when I'm gonna do this this year. I keep making these plans and then I'm like, girl, like the year, we only really have four and a half months left and I easily have three and a half months worth of reading planned already. So I'll think like, oh, I should read this this year and I just don't know what's gonna happen. Anyway, in theory, I'd like to read some more classics this year, but I may just have to like defer that to next year because like, shit is getting full. And then the third uh, book that I thought I would highlight from book Tubeathon uh, was The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein. That was another hit that I had. And yeah, again, you can see more of my thoughts in that particular video, but very thought provoking, a book I've still been thinking about and still been talking about with people over the last, you know, couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I, I might be buying a house sometime in the next year. And it gave me a lot of food for thought. So anyway, it was a really good book. Uh, and I would say those three were sort of my biggest hits from Booktubeathon, but you can watch that video and get my full thoughts on all the books that I read in that video. Another wrap up type video or a TBR wrap up video that I've already posted and three books that I have been reading this month uh, were these three right here. We've got Rogue Stallion by Diana Palmer. I have to, okay, I've gotta just tell you, if you have not watched my uh, bookstore picks my TBR and reading vlog, I would say it's probably worth watching just for me live reading this in my reading vlog and hate reading it. Yeah, I was pretty happy with how that came out and I think it captured my ire pretty well. Uh, but anyway, I, I had a really fun time doing that entire video. I really enjoyed it and you guys seem to really like it. So I need to think about how I can incorporate some of the um, the elements from that video that I enjoyed and you guys enjoyed into more videos. But anyway, so there was Rogue Stallion by Di Diana Palmer. Spoilers, not a single cowgirl sex scene in this. What the actual fuck? Ha, huh, pun. Then we have Wishing for Us by Sydney Landon and Weekends Required by Sydney Landon. Uh, and both of these were like uh, category, they're not category romances, but they're category type romances. They're category-esque romances. And yeah, I thought that these were like perfectly enjoyable. I liked this one enough that I decided to go ahead and read the second book. This is the first book in this Danvers series. I found out later, I accidentally read the first and the last book in this series. Um, I went ahead and read the second one called Not Planning on Us, I think. 
and I, I found that one pretty enjoyable too. So I think uh, uh, the Naughty Librarian, Amanda, she kind of told me that she thinks the first four books in this are, are worth reading. So I think I may continue on through that fourth book and then call it a day. But yeah, these were uh, interesting discoveries and some fun hate reading. So those are things you've already kind of seen a little bit about. Uh, in terms of other things that I've read that are potentially worth talking about that you have not heard me talk about, um, I finally read another installment in uh, the In Death series. It had been a few months since I'd done that. And this is is a kind of commercial fiction mystery slash romance slash futuristic sci-fi who knows genre bending uh book like long-running series i think there's something like 45 of them and this is book number 18 or 19 so i read another installment and this was a really good one i thought this was a, a installment where we saw some real character development and growth between um eve and rourke in terms of how they fight they have like a massive fight in this one and it is like emotional but they fight they're fighting better and I like that as like character development over the series and to me that's a lot of what these kinds of series like do well and like why they're worth reading or following along with is that you get to see kind of like macro character arcs over all of these stories and I think she does a nice job of that and yeah I always love Eve and, um, and Peabody's dynamic that's really great and there's some great Mavis moments in here and Mira like there's just a lot of great character moments in this and I thought it was a better than average uh, mystery. Um, the mysteries in these are always fine, like they're always competent and good, but I thought this was a better than average one. It was a little more kind of like political thriller-y and I thought that that worked. So yeah, this was a successful installment in my reading of this series. And then two other books I wanted to mention, um, both of these were arcs and both of these were ones that I really enjoyed. Um, I'll probably get into this maybe a little bit more in my, my wrap up at the end of the month, but one was called Weekend at Thackerley by Alan Melville. Now, I really enjoyed this experience. I put, I requested this arc because I saw Beacon Hill Books, Candace's uh, review of it, and it intrigued me. Um, basically, Alan Melville is, uh, this book was published in 1934 originally. He is a golden age of detective fiction author, just one that I had never heard of. I mean, I've heard of a lot of them from that era, but I hadn't heard of him. And this is, it was a really fun, Agatha Christie-esque, if you're not familiar with what Golden Age of Detection means. Um, think like kind of Agatha Christie, Dorothy Sayers, like that sort of like mostly British and like that kind of specific sensibility or feel to the books. And this was super enjoyable. It's uh, it, it's an isolated house mystery and that is probably my favorite uh, mystery trope. So yeah, and I thought that the narrative voice was very Wodehouse-esque. So if you are somebody who likes Wodehouse and Agatha Christie, I think that this is a book that's definitely worth looking at. And yeah, at some point in the future when I don't have all these books I need to read, um, I would really like to read more from him because I really, really enjoy this particular mystery. I also had a little like tiny splash of romance. I like that. Um, yeah, it was just super fun and super enjoyable. And I was just glad to kind of like discover a new author from that era that I hadn't heard of before. So I think that's a super cool project. I'm glad that um, that published, I forget who the publisher is, but I think they're bringing out a number of these types of books and uh, I will be keeping my eyes open for them. And then another arc that I had that actually, this is a book that came out in the middle of June and I just like, I got the book the day before it was releasing and I was just like, this is not happening and kind of gave up. But formerly known as Food by Kristen Lawless, I really enjoyed this book, but oh my gosh, it is bleak. Um, I would probably describe this as a manifesto. It is definitely polemic in its writing, which I really, I really like polemical writing. I know not everybody does. Some people are still under the misapprehension that there is such a thing as absolute objectivity, whatever, we could get into a whole discussion about that. I kind of like an author who lets you know like, I'm making an argument, I'm not pretending otherwise. Um, and she definitely does that. She, this is basically a book about the industrialized food complex and uh, details excruciatingly all of the minute ways in which we've really kind of fucked ourselves over in a lot of ways <laughs> in terms of our food supply and um, kind of the way we think about food, the way we eat, um, how we're feeding our children. There's a lot of stuff about that. It was intense. Um, and I really thought it was good at diagnosing a problem. I don't know that it was heavy on like practicable, scalable solutions. So it leaves you feeling a little sort of like despairing, like it gives you all of these problems and not a lot of solutions. So like, just, you know, keep that in mind. But um, I really enjoyed it. I thought I found it really worthwhile. This you guys know that this is an area of sort of like nonfiction that's really interesting to me in terms of like, I just I'm really interested in like nutrition and health nonfiction. So in that respect, it really worked for me. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was really well written and very, it's like brutal. It's kind of like a 
a very heavy read. I should also mention that I am now, I think, officially caught up on my Kate Daniels reread. So I have reread that entire little series, which has been taking up a lot of my reading time this week. And, uh, you know, it's my favorite running series right now. It's about to be over. The final book is coming out on August 28th. So the only two books that I have left to read in that series are Iron and Magic, and the one that has not yet been released, which is Magic Triumphs. Um, so kind of shifting into things that I am going to be reading. Iron and Magic is definitely on my list of things that I want to read before I go back to work in a couple weeks, because I just want to make sure that I, I read that so that like the decks are cleared, everything is ready for me to read Magic Triumphs when it comes out. I have it pre ordered. So it should be arriving on that Tuesday. And like, even though that's gonna be the second day at my new job, like you think that I'm gonna stay up and read every damn word, even if I have to stay up till three in the morning? Yes, yes I am. Um, so that is something that I need to read. Um, the other two things that I told myself I really wanted to do during this time off in terms of reading, I wanted to get caught up on library books. So I will give you kind of the rundown of ones that I have out right now. I would love to go back to work with no library books checked out. We'll see if that's possible. And then I also wanted to read all of my arcs through September. I originally wanted to read all the ones that I had and I just there's nine of them and I just don't think that's gonna happen. Um, but I at least want to get read up through September because I am starting a new job and I want to make sure that like th for that first month I don't really have a lot of pressure in terms of like, I need to get this read. So um, I'm currently reading Foundry Side. Let me tell you the author because I always forget his name. Robert Jackson Bennett. I always remember the Robert and the Bennett part, but I always forget the third one. So Robert Jackson Bennett, he wrote City of Stairs, which I have, but I have not yet read and heard such great things about. And I was very intrigued by the premise. And then Foundry Side is basically kind of like a steampunky type magic thing. I've gotten about 15% in and I'm enjoying it, but not loving it. Um, I have heard from both Candace at Beacon Hill Books and um, Bethany at Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Both of them have read and enjoyed this book. So that kind of gives me some some like energy and juice to keep going because I'm hopeful that I'm gonna get really into it. I may honestly, I've heard the middle is a little slow, so I may skim read that a little bit just because I am struggling um, and get to the final bit. Um, we'll see, we'll just see how things go. But uh, I'm enjoying it so far. I wouldn't say I'm loving it, but I think that I haven't given it enough attention to really have much of an opinion. So stay tuned. I will let you guys know what I think about that one. And then in terms of other arcs that I want to read during this little respite from work. Um, the ones that I have that come out in September, I have Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. I'm really looking forward to that one. It's going to be sort of like a romantic comedy kind of thing. And um, I've seen some really good reviews so far. So I'm excited for that. That comes out on September 4th. I'm very excited. Oh, so excited because I have a arc of Sadie by Courtney Summers, which comes out on September 4th. And this is like a of all the YA mysteries I've been dipping my toes into, this is the one, this and the cheerleaders basically were the two that I was like, this sounds awesome. So I'm really hopeful about it. It's like about a podcast about, like a true crime podcast that's following the person whose point of view we're in. So you have like a dual timeline. I'm really like the reviews of it have been really good and I'm really excited for this. So excited for that. That comes out on September 4th as well. Then I have a memoir called Heartland by Sarah Schmarsh, which makes me feel like I have a list. Smarsh, S-M-A-R-S-H, I think is how you spell that. And it's basically a memoir about, um, I think kind of like, in America, there's a lot of discussion about Trump country or like the Trump voter. And I mean, I'm in the American South, so like, trust and believe I know who some of these people are. Um, but this is kind of getting into sort of like rural, the desperation of rural America, how hard it is to break out, how, um, how the opportunities there are so limited, how the kind of vision of what is possible is so limited. I've just heard really good reviews about this in anticipation of its coming out. So I'm excited to read it. Um, I think that it'll be something kind of reflective and thought provoking. And I, I talked about this a little bit on this channel, but um, I mean, we're just gonna get political. Let's just do this. Uh, I've decided to use these four years to really like kind of reconnect reading wise with like, where the origin of some of these problems that we have in the US come from. And that include, you know, that's racial things, that's uh, class issues, that's like, uh, thinking about totalitarianism. I've been reading a lot of Hannah Arendt, um, all of those kinds of things. So this is sort of in the wheelhouse of that sort of like nebulous project I've set myself, which is I want to be educating myself about, like, 
where we are and how we got here and hearing voices that maybe I haven't been as deliberate in seeking out. So that book is a part of that project, I think. And then I have an arc for Can We All Be Feminist, uh, which comes out on September 25th. Uh, and it is edited, I believe, by June Eric Uduri. I think it's a I think it's like an anthology. And it's I think essentially about like intersectional feminism. I've seen some good buzz about it. And that's a topic that I'm always like, all, all about. So um, I think that will be really good. So those are my September that would get me through September. I'll just tell you the ones I have for October, I may get to a couple of these if I get fancy. Um, the other ones that I have for October are The Guardian by Sarah Fine. That is the sequel to I think it was The Serpent, the one that I talked about. Um, uh, the an urban fantasy with tarot cards. I talked about that I think in last month's wrap up or maybe the month before. Um, there's a sequel coming out like right on its heels called The Guardian. So I have an arc of that, I might get to it. Uh, I have an arc of The Witch of Willow Hall by Hester Fox, which is sort of like a Victorian thrillery, but I think it's coming out from Harlequin, so maybe a romance, I'm not sure, but um, I've seen some good buzz about it and I read the description was like, this sounds really intriguing, so I have that. Um, I have A History of America in 10 Strikes by Eric Loomis. That gets into that same kind of project I was talking about of sort of like thinking through um, historically and like sociologically where we are as America. Um, and I've heard some, I've broken record here, but I've heard some good things about it as well, that it's a, a really well done history. And then finally I have the library book by Susan Orlean, which comes out in the middle of October. I've never read anything from Susan Orlean, um, but reading the description of this one, I was like, this I think will be a good entry point for me with her. So those are some other arcs I might get to, um, but I'm really wanting to focus on those four that are coming out from now until the end of September, just because, or five, I guess, um, just because I want to I want to clear the decks for the new job and not be worried about what I should be reading because I've already taken care of that. Okay, and then I, like I said, my third goal for some of this time off slash through the end of August is I want to get through all the library books I have out. Um, so the ones that I have right now, uh, first I have People Like Us by Dana Melly Mel. Um, I've heard really good things about that. It's a YA mystery. I've said before I've been trying to read several of these because I want to do kind of a. I think in October I will have enough of a of a pool to draw from that I can do sort of a recommendation video. So I want to get to that one. I have Give Me Your Hand by Megan Abbott, which I think is an adult mystery. Um, but I've heard a lot of really good things about it. So I was intrigued and you know, you guys know I like a mystery. So I went ahead and grabbed that. I have Visions and Death by Nora Roberts, which is the next installment in the In Death series for me to get to. Um, I have Hashtag Murder Trending by Gretchen Neal out, which is I think sort of like Hunger Games-esque? I'm not totally sure. It's I think I decided it was YA mystery-ish and that's why I got it. Speaking of YA mystery-ish, I have One of Us is Lying um, by uh, Karen McManus. I already had this out from the library once and didn't read it in time to finish it. Uh, and I had read a little bit of it and hadn't been that impressed, but then I reread the back cover and I was like, but the premise sounds so cool. So I'm hoping I'm gonna try to get my shit together and actually finish that one, or at least make enough of an effort in it that I can feel good about DNFing it. Uh, and then I have Furyborn out from Claire Legrand, uh, which has been a super hyped fantasy, uh, YA fantasy here on booktube, and I've heard nothing but awesome things about it. Another one, I, ooh, maybe I need to wait to do my video until Sawkill Girls comes out because that sounds fucking awesome. And uh, she, that's one she has coming out, I think, um, I think in September. Uh, and I, I know it has some kind of thriller element to it. So I don't know. Anyway, that's also on my radar. But yeah, those are the things that I've read and some things that are on my radar. I will say I've been slightly slumpish since I've been off work just because, I don't know, I don't have as much of like a routine. So reading just hasn't been as much of a priority. I'm also trying to finish outlining um, a, a fiction thing that I've been working on because I want to have the outline done for when I go back to work. So I don't know how much of this will get done. We'll just like play it by ear. We will see. Um, the beauty of being off is that I am the mistress of my own time. And it's reading, it's just for fun. If I don't get to it, it's, it's not that deep. It's not that big of a deal. The book will still be there for me to read at some point. So those are my plans. We'll see how much of those actually come to being. But yeah, I think that will do it for this installment of what I'm reading right now for August 2018. Definitely let me know if you guys are reading anything super exciting right now. I always, well, I don't need any recommendations, but I always like getting them. Um, so definitely feel free to let me know that. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social means if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. 
I'm at Books Like Whoa pretty much everywhere and uh, you can always see what I'm reading right now if you are following my reviews or my friend on Goodreads so feel free to find me there and uh, I think that will do it. I hope you're having a really lovely Friday and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!